Interrupted by gunfire. Now a suspect is dead. Max Massey brings us the latest on this developing story. A murder investigation continues this noon. Why police are now reaching out to you to help with this investigation. We've had some pretty comfortable days with cloud cover around. That changes as we go into the weekend. Your forecast is coming up. Live from case at 12. The news at noon starts right now. A call for a burglary at an apartment on the west side turning into gunfire with officers shooting and killing a suspect. Police still combing through body cam footage to piece together what exactly happened. But as Max Massey shows us, it was a terrifying night for families in the area. The first gunshot I heard, I thought he shot her. This is the downstairs neighbor who heard and saw the situation here at the Westway Apartments all unfold late last night. She declined to give us her name, but did tell us it was scary. The way everything was going on, like my kids could have gotten shot. I have five children in the own. You know. Police were called here just before 11 last night for a burglary, and while they were in their vehicle, gunfire erupted. <laughs> entering some information into their computers when they heard a shot. They went back up, they heard several more shots, a few more shots. Police say there was an armed suspect. A woman and five children ages one year to 12 years came rushing out of the apartment and she told the officer that, that the person inside had a gun. Chief McManus tells us that man then barricaded himself inside the bathroom of the apartment. After interactions with police, that man was shot and was later taken to University Hospital where he died. No officers were injured and we are still waiting for more information. I haven't seen the body cam uh, to be able to accurately tell you what happened after that. So uh, until I see that or until the preliminary report comes out, I'm not going to comment further. The investigation is still ongoing, and we do expect to learn more from police about what exactly happened here. But for now, neighbors tell me things need to change. Well, they shoot out here all the time. Like, you hear shooting all the time. Just the night before that, you hear somebody driving by and shooting at the construction site. Yeah, you hear police are out here at least once a day, it seems like. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. And we do have an update on that story for you. We understand that the officers involved are on administrative leave. Also new this noon, the police are still working to track down a woman's killer. Now they're hoping someone will come forward with more information. Police say that Crystal Holland was killed on September 9th. They say she was shot while standing outside of her home in the 500 block of Ferris Avenue. Officers tell us the suspect or suspects drove by and fired multiple shots. Holland was hit. She died at the scene. There were some other people there at the time. However, police were not able to get information from them. If you know something that could help police with this case, you can call 210-224-STOP. Also near this noon, police investigating after a woman was found on the side of the road with a gunshot wound. Officers say they found the 43-year-old near Roosevelt and 99th Street last night. Someone reported hearing gunshots in the area. However, police didn't find a suspect. Witnesses told police they heard the shooting but didn't see anything. And we are still waiting to learn a victim's name after the 20-year-old man was found shot and killed on the city's west side. Police were called to the 9800 block of Petrenko Road last night just before 7. They found the victim inside a dark gray Chevy van. The vehicle was left in a parking lot. Police say the victim was shot and was already unresponsive. The medical examiner later arrived and pronounced him dead. Officers were able to talk to witnesses and get leads on potential suspects. A south side home now has some significant damage after a fire erupted. Those flames now being blamed on a gas fed dryer. Fire crews say just after two this morning, they were called to the 1700 block of Ann Arbor Drive. They were told that flames were shooting out of the home's roof. Firefighters say they were able to put out those flames quickly, but one firefighter had a medical issue and had to be taken to the hospital for evaluation. Five people were inside the home when the fire started, including a child. They all made it out safely. After an hours long meeting, the Texas Historical Commission voted and they decided not to move the cenotaph at the Alamo Plaza. The city of San Antonio had wanted to move the monument several hundred feet away and make some repairs to it. The proposed move was part of a larger years long plan to renovate the area around the Alamo, which Councilman Roberto Trevino 
has now said has been thrown off by this change in the first phase. The councilman says this puts the whole project in jeopardy, in his opinion. It may restart the entire process, but uh, this city council is going to have to have a discussion uh, along with the management committee, uh, the citizens advisory committee. Uh, yeah, so th this is we're going to have to try to map this out and, and see what can be done. The vote came at the end of a nearly 10 hour meeting following more than six hours worth of public comment. Supporters of moving the monument say it would help tell a better story of the Alamo, but opponents of the move saw the plan as an act of disrespect and raised concerns about possible damage to the monument by moving it. The state of Texas is now closing in on 15,000 coronavirus-related deaths. And here in Bear County, city officials announced 196 new cases and six new deaths. City officials also reporting an uptick in hospitalizations. Currently, 233 patients are in local hospitals, with 86 in the ICU and 42 on ventilators. Across the nation, more than 200,000 Americans have now died from COVID-19 since the pandemic began. The head of the CDC, the Surgeon General, and Dr. Anthony Fauci all testifying on Capitol Hill today on the response to the virus over the past six months. The president has said he thinks we could see a vaccine sometime this year, but now Dr. Fauci says scientists could get close. Dr. Fauci says by the end of this year, government scientists should know whether they have a safe and effective vaccine for COVID-19. Fauci again testifying before the Senate Health, Education, Labor and Pensions Committee. During his testimony, he said that because people who recover from the virus develop antibodies against it, he has confidence that a vaccine that triggers the immune system will work. Fauci says several kinds of vaccines are in the final stage of testing in the U.S. A single dose candidate is among the recent trials that require thousands of volunteers. A Texas institution set to be wiped out could actually now be saved. How a company might give Luby's a second chance after the break. An iconic restaurant could be saved. The company behind Papa Doe, Seafood Kitchen, and Papa Cito's Cantina could be swooping in to buy Luby's. Earlier this month, we told you Luby's announced it would liquidate and dissolve the company. Well, Christopher and Harris James Pappas entered a confidentiality agreement with Luby's apparently on September 11th to obtain the company's financial records. They are now deciding whether to acquire the 73-year-old Texas institution. Closing dates for several restaurants have yet to be announced. Recently, Luby's promoted giveaways, online ordering, and free kids' meals on social media. Luby's Inc. owns Luby's Cafeteria, as well as Fuddruckers. And it is time to lace up your shoes for the Head for the Cure Virtual 5K. The race is happening this Saturday, and right now we have a last-minute discount code to get $5 off the registration fee. All you have to do is use the code LASTCHANCE. All one word and all in caps. Since the race is virtual this year, you can participate by snapping a selfie of yourself running, walking, or cycling a 5K in your neighborhood. Then on Saturday, join Head for the Cure on Facebook or YouTube at 8 o'clock in the morning and share your pictures. For a link to register, just go to ksatcommunity.com. They didn't say anything about just, you know, sitting on the couch or anything, taking a selfie, you just like hanging out. Well, can't do that. You gotta do something in spirit. You gotta get out there and exercise. Yeah, I, got a, I got a question though. Where's the sun today? Oh, it's, it's trying to come out. It, it'll be out this afternoon, I think. You promise? For the most part, yes. No, I do promise, yes. Uh, especially out west. Uh, we're gonna see the sun pop out and temperatures will jump up. They already have in some cases. The aquifer is down a tenth of a foot to 664.1. And uh, looking at the uh, pollen count, uh, ragweed's moderate, mold is low. Ragweed's down from where it was yesterday, so good news there. Sunny skies ahead. We'll talk about it coming up. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Leftovers can help your budget and save some time on cooking meals. They're also a great way to reduce food waste. But keeping them in your fridge for too long can be unhealthy. Producer Jared Hoying tells us more about how long you should keep food in and out of the fridge. 
Healthline magazine reports many factors can influence how long you keep your leftovers. Fruits and vegetables can stay fresh the longest, but the sooner you eat them, the better they will taste. Raw, fresh-cut fruit and veggies will last up to five days in the refrigerator. When cooked, you can store leftover vegetables and beans in an airtight container for up to seven days. And bread will last as long as it does not get moldy, but after three days, it is less fresh. Medium-risk foods include cooked pasta and grains, like quinoa and barley, and will only last up to three days. But to make them last longer, you can freeze them for up to three months. Desserts also don't last as long as you may hope, and you should throw them out after a few days. Foods high in protein and moisture need to be eaten the quickest. Deli meat expires in five days after opening the package, and cooked chicken and beef will only stay fresh for up to two days in the fridge. And be sure to put rice in a Tupperware within one hour after cooking it, and eat it within two days. Otherwise, you can be at a high risk for food poisoning. You learn something new every day? I just put your phone in it if it's too old, your rice. Oh. If, you, if you drop it in your water. <laughs> it's also best to eat your leftovers from a restaurant as soon as possible. You may not know how long the food was stored at the restaurant, so it's best to eat it within 24 hours of buying it. Do you eat the rice after you put your cell phone in it to dry no. it out? No. I thought David was saying you put your phone in the refrigerator. I was confused there for a second, but I got what you're saying now, the rice. Maybe that'll work. I don't know. <laughs> don't do I that. Help. <laughs> We're not suggesting that. Uh, what a beautiful sunrise it was this morning. Uh, just gorgeous. Wow. Look at that shot. This was at 7 o'clock this morning. You can see the sun coming up. We had some crepuscular rays there off in the distance. Watch what happens, though. Quickly, the clouds come in, and we've stayed cloudy ever since. 72, 70, well, not now it's up to... Uh, 77 at the airport. Uh, humidity is at 69 percent. We've got north northwest chilly winds at about eight miles per hour. Winds are not as gusty as they were last couple days as beta is moving away from us. There you see the visible satellite picture. There are some breaks in this cloud cover, so it's not a true overcast situation here, but mostly cloudy for sure. And it looks like it'll stay that way at least another couple of hours before the uh, sun breaks out. It looks like this afternoon. It's kind of a tough call here. We're right on the edge of that cloud cover. And it does look like it's trying to uh, thin out just a little bit. Folks off to the west, you're seeing sunny skies. If you're out in Del Rio, Uvalde, down the Eagle Pass, it's sunny for you. And temperatures are responding accordingly. Uh, there's a look at Beta, still spinning just north of Beaumont there. It is moving away, but bringing heavy rain to parts of Louisiana at this hour. And you see all the cloud cover spreads from Wichita Falls to Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, and San Angelo and slowly eroding from west to east. Water vapor imagery shows there's a ton of dry, stable air over Texas. Now, this is in the middle uh, levels here uh, of the atmosphere, so it's not technically uh, super dry at the surface. We still have dew points in the 60s, so you can still feel it a little bit. Uh, but it is going to show that uh, we'll have some stable conditions and uh, not uh, any rain in the forecast, at least not until we get into next week. Uh, dew points in the 60s. For the most part, they will come up a little bit as we get into Sunday. Maybe a little bit more cloud cover on Sunday because of that. 78 in New Braunfels, 73 Canyon Lake, 72 Bernie Stage, 74 Randolph, 79 right now in Pleasanton. You get out west underneath where there, uh, there's plenty of sun, 83 in Del Rio, 82 right now in Carrizo Springs. I want to show you the, uh, tropics, the tropics real quick because it has quieted down significantly. If you remember last week, we had a ton of systems going in the Atlantic. It's been a very busy year. Now we just have Beta and Teddy, and these are now uh, just uh, remnants. They're not even really becoming or not tropical anymore. So uh, it is quiet for now, but keep in mind, we still have more time to go. We are not done with hurricane season just yet, and uh, we're past the peak, but we still certainly could see more activity. And uh, this year, the way it's going, I wouldn't be surprised if we did see a little bit more. Here's what our future cast looks like. That system, what's left the beta moves away. And we'll fast forward here to Friday. There's a little system that develops along the Rio Grande. It just doesn't have much to work with, not a lot of moisture. So we're going to keep rain out of the forecast for now. As we get into Saturday and Sunday, can't completely roll out a stray shower or storm. We put in a 10% chance of rain, but it's uh, very low end. I would not bet on it. And as we get into Sunday, it does show maybe a shower or two there along the coast. Uh, next week, though, we will get a front, and that will bring some cooler air in here. Somewhat cooler air by the middle part of next week. Forecast for today, 83 by 2 o'clock, mostly cloudy. We'll call it partly cloudy, 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Temperatures mid-80s. Now, if the clouds don't break up as fast, those temperatures may be a little bit lower. Uh, tomorrow, we go 88, 89 on Friday. 
a bit more cloud cover on Sunday and there's that front looks like right now it will move in late on Tuesday. We've got 90s there. This should drop temperatures back into the 80s, guys. All right. Thank you, Justin. Texas, Texas Tech Preview coming up next. We are still mourning the loss of Texas high school football legendary coach today. Last evening, we found out Somerset High School football head coach Sonny Detmer passed away. Detmer had been in and out of the hospital with a number of health issues, including pneumonia. It was thought he was doing much better until his sudden passing yesterday morning. He was not only a coach, but a father of two football standouts in Ty and Coy Detmer. Ty, a star for Southwest High School here in San Antonio before going on to BYU, where he won the Heisman Trophy in 1990 before a 14-year NFL career with six different teams. His brother Coy, a high school star in Mission, Texas, before he moved to Colorado and later to the NFL, where he played for both the Eagles and the Vikings over a 10-year span. Sonny compiled a record of 235, 141, and two in 35 years of coaching. But Sonny's legacy is much more than that as a husband, father, and mentor to so many young and old. He personified all the good things about coaching. He was a hard worker. He was always willing to work with anybody. Uh, when you won a game, he was always the first to compliment you. And if you beat him, he would always be one of the first ones to come up and tell you, great job, and he is going to be sorely missed. San Antonio uh, High School football lost a great man today. Matter of fact, the state of Texas lost a great high school football coach today. Obviously, if you know Sonny Detmer, the man is introduced as the great Sonny Detmer. And um, I, I truly believe he's one of the Mount Rushmore's of, of Texas high school football. Our prayers are with the Detmer family and the entire Bulldog Nation. Sonny Detmer has passed away at the age of 76. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys set an NFL attendance record during the COVID-19 pandemic with an announced attendance of 21,708 fans during their home opener on Sunday against the Atlanta Falcons. On his weekly radio show, owner Jerry Jones said he wants to increase the number of fans during the next home game against the Browns on October the 4th. We were quite uh, pleased with how it worked out there Sunday. Uh, can we do better? Of course we can. But uh, uh, can we have more fans? Yes, we can. And we can do it safely. And we will adjust accordingly. We're doing some exciting things out there. And I think the NFL is going to have a big year in spite of the COVID. On the field, we thought the Cowboys were bringing back former Cowboys lineman Ron Leary to help replace Leo Collins, who was put on the injured reserve list due to hip issues. But for some reason, the deal fell through. The Cowboys faced the Seahawks this Sunday in Seattle. Well, the Texas Longhorns will be heading to Lubbock this weekend to open up Big 12 play against the Texas Tech Red Raiders. The Horns coming off a 59-3 route of UTEP two weeks ago at home while the Red Raiders were able to hold on for a skinny win over the Houston Baptist 35-33. The main reason the Red Raiders have suffered a massive outbreak of positive Corona tests on the team. In order to protect themselves, the Longhorns will not have a team meal on Friday. Instead, they will take individual meals to their rooms where they will not have roommates on this road trip. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Obviously, this is our, our first road game, so it'll be interesting to see uh, kind of the differences and the nuances that come with uh, social distancing on the road. Uh, I think it's, it's definitely a plus that we're not going to have to face a full capacity uh, Lubbock Stadium. Obviously, they can get very rowdy. The Red Raiders top running back Sir Roderick Thompson has been arrested for a street racing incident that occurred back in June, although he is expected to play on Saturday. The kickoff is at 2.30 in Jones Stadium. That'll be a good one. Good way to start the Big 12 season. You keep forgetting about the SEC. I, I, I know LSU's playing. Okay. I don't forget. The Aggies are playing Saturday. I know. I don't forget. But this is Texas and Texas Tech. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll be busy. <laughs> for some, fall brings the excitement of cooler weather and football. For others, it's the joy of your favorite fall flavored drink. But those treats can be filled with some sugar. Coming up next, how to enjoy them without packing on the pounds. A massive wildfire northeast of Los Angeles has been scorching acres through the national forest since Labor Day weekend. Now we're learning more about the reason behind the fire's rapid growth. 